heard about them? I think there's a movie called Circuit. Short Circuit. Short Circuit. It's a device that you program to do a certain thing. It's what is in the devices. Cameras, lights, digital TVs, or any TVs for that matter. Gaming systems, computers. Computers, a lot of them actually. Robots. I think even in motors. I think what it does is it'll send a series of signals through receivers, transmitters, and something else, I think, um, causing whatever it's hooked up to to do a certain action. Motors to spin, light bulbs to turn on, TVs to work with the mouse and the keyboard, things like that. Hi, I'm Sabelle, and I'm here with Ashley from TIFF Kids Did You Play Space. Hi, Ashley. Hi, how's it going? It's good, thank you. So would you like to explain what you have here? This is an example of the kind of cool technology that's going to be in the TIFF Did You Play Space. Do you know what a LED is? Unfortunately, I have no idea what it is. Okay, so that's cool, that's no problem. The LEDs are just a fancy word for a light bulb. So you can see we have four tiny little light bulbs right here, and we have four buttons in the same color. So um, guess what this circuit does? It lights up when you press a button. Yeah, totally. So press that red button. Awesome. And so all the buttons correspond with the lights and will turn on the light bulb when you press them. So what's happening inside this circuit is that uh, our battery pack, which you can see at the bottom of this box, is supplying power to our breadboard. What's a breadboard? Good question. So a breadboard is basically like this cool um, piece of technology that has metal slots underneath a bunch of holes, and those slots help us navigate the power to different parts of our circuit. So um, our battery is supplying our power to our breadboard, and then our breadboard is supplying power to our lights. So the way that our buttons work is they act as almost like a wall or a door to our power. So they're going to hold our power away from our lights until we press them. When we press them, it, they open the doors, and the power goes through and makes our light bulb go off. Yeah. Could you make the lights flash? Yeah, you could totally make the lights flash. So obviously the easy way would be to press the button over and over again, but you can do much cooler things at home by um, experimenting with devices like potentiometers or Arduinos. Um, with a little bit of uh, practice, you could definitely make a light go off um, as fast or as slow as you'd want it to. Okay, and how about this one? Yeah, so this one is really cool. It's my favorite. Um, let's take a look at it here. So uh, there's lots of cool things going on in this circuit. Um, but first, let's talk about this. So this looks like our LED or our light bulb that we see in all the other circuits, but it's a little bit more special. Have you ever heard of an RGB LED? No. Okay, so an RGB LED is basically an LED that has a tiny red bulb inside, a tiny green bulb, and a tiny blue bulb inside. So um, because we have access to all these tiny little different colored light bulbs, we can combine them um, to make any colored light that we want. So uh, it's pretty cool. So you can see that it has four little legs. So um, three of those legs, one is for the red, one is for the green, one is for the blue. So we again have our battery pack giving our breadboard some power. So let's take some of these resistors and plug them in. So have you ever heard of a resistor before? Uh, no, what is that? So a resistor is a little electronic component um, that determines how much energy is going to go from our battery pack to our LED. So some of our resistors allow a lot of energy through, some allow a medium amount, and some allow a small amount. Pick a color. You can turn on our red or a green red. or a blue. Okay, so you're going to plug one end of that metal um, leg in there and one in the top of that line. Ta -da! So there's our red. I'm going to make a purple light. So what two colors make purple? Red and blue. Yeah, so I'm going to allow a lot of energy to our red bulb and a lot of energy to our blue bulb and it is going to turn our light purple. Cool, eh? That's very cool. You know that if you mix um, red and blue and green together, it's going to make white. So we can even see that in our circuit here. So our light is going to glow white. So we can change the color by removing different amounts of resistors and putting in different um, intensities so that we can uh, allow more or less energy to go to each light bulb and therefore change the color. That's really cool. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that with me. Yeah, no problem. 
Hello, my name is Miranda. Today, my brother and I are going to teach you how to make a brush pot. First, you will need some tape, a toothbrush, a motor, some scissors, a battery, and wire cutters. The steps for making a brush pot are, step one, use some wire cutters to cut off the head of the toothbrush. When you are cutting the head off the toothbrush, ask an adult to do that for you. Step two, tape the back of the head, the spot without the thistle things on it, tape the battery to that part. Step three, tape the motor to the top of the battery. Step four, cut another small piece off the toothbrush and tape it to the motor shaft. Step five, tape one of the wires to one end of the battery and then as soon as you tape the other end of the wire to the other end of the battery, it'll start running and watch it twirl around. My name is Jonathan Guberman. I'm a maker and tinkerer, mostly with electronics, and I'm the designer and manufacturer of the Pianocade synthesizer. I would describe myself as a DIY artist or, or designer or a maker. The, the Pianocade is a musical synthesizer, so it's an electronic musical instrument uh, that is designed to sound like old video games and is built using parts from old video games. The inspiration for the Piano Cade happened right here at TIFF. Uh, during Nuit Blanche last year, the arts festival, I was involved in an all night long chiptunes concert here. Uh, chiptunes is a type of music where people use old video games to make sounds. And I thought it would be really fun if there were an instrument that people could make these sorts of sounds and have the fun of playing with the, the old arcade buttons and joysticks, but without needing to learn how to program an old Game Boy or Nintendo. Uh, DIY to me means thinking of something that you want and rather than looking to see if it's something you can buy somewhere, uh, figuring out if it's something that you can make for yourself and then doing it. <laughs> A great reason for kids to get into DIY is that Nobody out there knows what it is you want better than you. So if you go out and try to buy something, you're always buying what someone else thinks you want. But if you make it yourself, then you're making exactly what you want. Uh, and it's always going to be better.